My husband's a decent provider as a teacher, and I work part-time as a registered nurse. My husband cheated on me while I was pregnant and treated me horribly, physically pushing me and being verbally aggressive. I worked more while pregnant just to not be around him. He was not like this at all before we got married. I knew he had depression, but mainly he just slept more occasionally and was only on one medication for depression and seemed fine. He went to anger management when I threatened to divorce him while pregnant, and he actually made a lot of changes. He's on several different medications for his mood, but even with this, he's always passive aggressive and rude and hateful towards me. Even in the grocery store, he's rude to me in public and complains every time I put an item in the cart. Mind you, he eats out more than me because I started eating healthier and losing weight, and he never likes anything I cook. He'll yell at me if I have the thermostat set at 67. I feel like I'm always walking on eggshells, and he threatens to unalive himself every time I bring up that our marriage is in trouble, and if there is no change, I want out. Every once in a while, he will make changes for a week, and then it goes back to tension and passive aggression. He stares at women, like, stares not just glances, acts like I'm not there, and has even come off as flirting to me. I've told him it bothers me and I understand a glance, but everything else is bull. He always reacts by blowing up and being angry or threatening to harm himself. He has smashed his phone to pieces when I asked him up front if I could look at it because I was worried he was cheating. My mom's the only one around, but she is probably a narcissist and we do not get along, but maybe we could for a short-term basis. He doesn't sleep in the same room and he's a borderline hoarder. I should have picked up on that red flag sooner, but it definitely got worse after having a kid. He's controlling about parenting and we have very different approaches. If it was just me, I would leave today, but because I have a two-year-old, I feel like I have let her down. I'm so over it and done. I'm trying to put her in preschool so I can work full time and save up to leave him. Right now I'm working weekends, so my husband and I are more like ships in the night. Last night he drank too much and vomited in the tub instead of the toilet, which I of course had to clean up. My daughter was scared and crying because he was loud throwing up. Our daughter has sensory issues and still doesn't sleep through the night, and I know having a little kid is stressful, but I'm so unhappy I cry myself to sleep most nights and daydream about selling our house and buying a condo. Has anyone been in this situation? Please give your advice. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, I have been the child in this situation. I was maybe two years old when my father punched my mother in the face. We never knew when he would go from okay to upset. There was physical and mental abuse. Our mother seemed like she was shrinking into herself. She was scared to say or do anything. The situation left us all with emotional and mental health issues. All the kids had relationship issues because we had never seen a healthy relationship. Comment two, why would it be good for your daughter to watch her mother being treated poorly? Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for reading. Two weeks ago, I finally got my daughter into a preschool program. It was a huge relief because it meant I could start working full time and save up more money. The first few days were rough. She cried every morning when I dropped her off and it broke my heart, but I knew it was for the best. I needed to get us out of this toxic environment. My husband, of course, had his own opinions about the preschool. He thought it was too expensive and unnecessary, but I stood my ground. I told him it was non-negotiable. One evening, after a particularly stressful day at work, I came home to find my husband in a foul mood. He was upset because I had forgotten to pick up his dry cleaning. I tried to explain that I had a long day and it slipped my mind, but he wouldn't hear it. He started yelling and our daughter, who was playing in the living room, began to cry. I took her to her room to calm her down, and when I came back, he was gone. He had stormed out of the house, slamming the door behind him. That night, I put our daughter to bed and sat in the living room, feeling utterly defeated. I knew I couldn't keep living like this. I started looking up divorce lawyers and shelters for women and children. I needed a plan, and I needed it fast. But before I could make any concrete decisions, my husband came back. He was drunk and belligerent, and I knew I had to tread carefully. I'd, I helped him to bed and went to sleep on the couch, my mind racing with thoughts of escape. The next morning, he was surprisingly calm. He apologized for his behavior and promised to do better. I wanted to believe him, but 
I knew it was just another empty promise. I decided to start secretly putting money aside. Every time I got paid, I would transfer a small amount into a separate account that he didn't know about. It wasn't much, but it was a start. A few days later, I got a call from the preschool. Our daughter had a meltdown, and they needed me to come pick her up. I left work early and rushed to the school. When I got there, she was inconsolable. I took her home and tried to comfort her, but nothing seemed to work. My husband came home and saw her crying, and instead of helping, he started yelling at me for not being able to calm her down. It was the last straw. I knew I had to get out, but I didn't know how. And that weekend, my mom came over to visit. We don't have the best relationship, but I needed someone to talk to. I told her everything that had been going on, and to my surprise, she was supportive. She offered to let us stay with her until I could get back on my feet. It wasn't an ideal situation, but it was better than staying with my husband. I started making plans to leave, but before I could put my plan into action, something happened that changed everything. My husband had a breakdown. He came home from work one day and collapsed on the floor, sobbing. He said he couldn't take it anymore and that he needed help. I didn't know what to do. Part of me wanted to leave him there and run, but another part of me felt sorry for him. I called his therapist and made an emergency appointment. The therapist suggested that he check into a mental health facility for a while to get the help he needed. My husband agreed and the next day, I drove him to the facility. It was a strange feeling, dropping him off and driving away. I felt a mix of relief and guilt. I knew he needed help, but I also knew that I needed to take this opportunity to get out. While he was in the facility, I packed up our things and moved in with my mom. It was a chaotic few days, but I managed to get everything done. My daughter was confused and upset, but I tried to explain that it was for the best. I enrolled her in a new preschool near my mom's house and started looking for a full-time job in the area. A week later, my husband called me from the facility. He sounded different, calmer. He said he was getting the help he needed and that he wanted to work on our marriage. I didn't know what to say. I told him I needed time to think. I hung up the phone and sat there feeling torn. Part of me wanted to believe that he could change, but another part of me knew that I couldn't keep putting myself and our daughter through this. I decided to focus on getting settled at my mom's house and finding a job. I needed to be independent and make sure that I could provide for my daughter on my own. I started therapy for myself, and it helped me to see things more clearly. I realized that I had been putting my husband's needs above my own for far too long. As I started to rebuild my life, I thought a lot about my past. I remembered how my mom used to be controlling and how I had always felt like I had to please her. It made me realize that I had been doing the same thing with my husband. I had been so focused on making him happy that I had lost sight of my own happiness. One night, as I was putting my daughter to bed, she looked up at me and said, Mommy, are we going to be okay? It broke my heart, but it also gave me strength. I knew that I had to do whatever it took to make sure that we were okay. I hugged her tight and promised her that we would be. Thank you for reading. Am I the idiot for snooping through my partner's phone and finding out he's a cheating misogynist? My 37-year-old newish relationship, six months with a 38-year-old, started out like I may have won the lottery. We both had gotten out of relationships we thought were supposed to be the ones to build a family and home with. We took things very slow after we met, still dating other people and healing and getting clear on what we wanted. Guy said that he was trying to heal from his past relationship and needed time. Me too. We committed in February and I felt nervous but excited. He seemed thoughtful, a little nerdy, and had his life together. I thought we were pretty well suited in terms of stuff we like to do and physically. I took him to meet friends and family. They like him. I've met some friends of his, but they are mostly new, like within the last year or so. He seems to understand and take it seriously that I want to move fast if I'm going to be able to start a family. However, now I am paralyzed by a physical sensation of panic and fear. I wake up at night with my heart beating out of my chest and replay weird things that he has said or times that he hasn't fully been open or honest with me. The conflict I've seen so far has been okay, but I feel like he handles things by withholding, and that is triggering anxiety for me. I have a track record of overlooking red flags, 
and I'm in fear that some of the red flags of my actions and his are already too toxic to proceed. My first gut check was that guy told me a friend dropped him last fall because he doesn't like how he treats women. I asked for an explanation. Where would this come from? He didn't have one and blamed the ex-friend as unstable. I decided to wait and see what I could discern, but my body has continued to feel non-neutral and really got ratcheted up with our first argument. In my panic this week, I broke trust and looked in his phone, which I know is itself a toxic and terrible thing to do to a partner. I found, of course, things there that make me think he is just not a good person, and specifically in conversation with his ex-friend. Yes, I know you deserve what you look for. Around the time he met me, it is clear he is not enthusiastic about my appearance. He also says lots of crude things about other women and how important looks are to him in a partner. This makes me feel that he is settling for me. He also wasn't honest to me about what was happening in his past relationship. I have tried to be really aware of my past shoot and upfront with him. Has anyone ever experienced this before? How did you make a decision? Is the proof already in the pudding because I crossed a boundary and in my own way have been a bad person? Will the right person just not trigger my desire to go digging? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, woof. The first thing was a huge red flag and calling the friend unstable doubly so. This is a standard aggressor tactic. But then you found confirmation that he treats women, including you, like crap. He's literally talking behind your back and you're considering staying with him? Sis, no, don't do this to yourself. This isn't a hard decision. This guy is hiding his true self. You followed your gut, you found the truth, and you need to break up with him immediately. This is absolutely an aggressor and he's not going to stay low key forever. He will behave himself until you are locked in and then he will unleash himself. Get out. Comment two. From the title, trust your gut. Mine has never led me wrong and has even saved my life. After reading, yep, many abusers can mask for a certain amount of time and slowly the mask slips. Little by little, nothing big that you would know was a deal breaker until more and more shows and you suddenly realize how you got here. Voice of experience. And you have actual evidence. Now for the update. Hey everyone, a lot has happened since my last post. After my last update, I decided to confront him about what I found on his phone. I was nervous, but I felt like I needed to know the truth. When I brought it up, he got really defensive and tried to turn it around on me, saying that I was invading his privacy and that it was a huge breach of trust. I knew he was right about that part, but I couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the story. We had a huge argument and he stormed out of my apartment. I didn't hear from him for the rest of the day and I was left feeling even more anxious and unsure about our relationship. The next day he came back and apologized for getting so angry, but he still didn't give me any clear answers about the things I found on his phone. He just kept saying that it was all in the past and that I needed to trust him. I tried to put it behind me, but the doubts kept creeping back in. I started to notice more and more little things that didn't add up. He would cancel plans at the last minute, saying he had to work late, but then I'd see him tagged in photos on social media out with friends. He also started to get more secretive with his phone, always keeping it face down and taking it with him everywhere, even to the bathroom. One night I decided to follow him when he said he was going to work late. I know it was a terrible thing to do, but I just couldn't take the uncertainty anymore. I followed him to a bar where he met up with the woman I didn't recognize. They were laughing and talking and it was clear that they were more than just friends. I felt sick to my stomach and left before they could see me. When I confronted him about it the next day, he finally admitted that he had been seeing someone else. He said that he didn't know how to tell me because he didn't want to hurt me, but that he had been feeling unsure about our relationship for a while. He said that he still cared about me, but that he didn't think we were right for each other. I was devastated. I felt like I had been living a lie for the past six months. I couldn't believe that I had ignored all the red flags and let myself get so invested in someone who wasn't honest with me. I ended things with him right then and there, and he moved out of my apartment that same day. In the days that followed, I started to piece together more of the truth. I found out from a mutual friend that he had been seeing this other woman for almost the entire time we were together. He had been lying to both of us. 
making us both believe that we were the only ones. I felt so betrayed and humiliated. I also started to reflect on my own action and realized that I had been ignoring my own instincts and boundaries. I had been so desperate to make the relationship work that I had overlooked so many red flags and allowed myself to be treated poorly. I realized that I needed to take some time to work on myself and figure out why I had been willing to settle for someone who didn't respect me. In the midst of all this, I also found out that I was pregnant. I was in complete shock and didn't know what to do. I knew that I couldn't rely on him for support, and I wasn't sure if I was ready to be a single mom. I felt so overwhelmed and scared. I decided to reach out to my family and close friends for support. They were all incredibly supportive and helped me to see that I could do this on my own. I also started seeing a therapist to help me work through my feelings and figure out what I wanted to do. As I started to come to terms with everything, I realized that I needed to focus on myself and my baby. I decided to keep the baby and to do everything I could to create a stable and loving environment for them. It hasn't been easy, but I'm starting to feel more hopeful about the future. Looking back, I can see that there were so many signs that things weren't right, but I chose to ignore them because I wanted so badly for the relationship to work. I've learned a lot about myself and what I need in a relationship, and I'm determined not to make the same mistakes again. Thank you for reading. Am I the idiot for asking my fiance's friend to leave my house at 3 a.m. and ending the relationship? When they refused to respect my boundaries, I went out of town for work and my fiance grabbed dinner with one of his close friends. After dinner, they both went back to our house to watch a movie. Nothing wrong with that. The problem starts when I called around midnight and she was still there. This is a Tuesday night and they both work early the next morning. I expressed maybe mild annoyance, but at this point, I didn't vocalize that I was uncomfortable or unhappy with her there. I thought they would pick up the vibe that it's late and maybe it's time for her to go home. They expressed that they were wrapping up the movie and she was about to go home. When I called an hour later and she was still there, I kindly but firmly expressed that I would appreciate it if she went home. I told them I was uncomfortable with her being there so late without me. I've had nothing but a great relationship with her, so I figured I could just be honest. I was very careful not to be rude, and I tried to express that I don't think anything would happen between them, but it would make me feel better if she left. Plus, it was already late. My fiance was very upset with me, as I figured he would be and I assumed we would have a talk when I got back from my work trip. She said she didn't know what to do because he wanted her to stay, and I was asking her to go. Another 30 minutes go by, and I call again. She's still there. This time I was more forceful, but my request was the same. Please leave. At this point, my fiance is refusing to speak to me, so I'm speaking to her and nearly begging her to leave my house because this is inappropriate, and I feel very uncomfortable. She doesn't leave until 3 a.m., and when she does, she calls me and berates me because she thinks I'm not respecting their friendship. To add, they have a history and have slept together multiple times in the past, but ultimately decided to just be friends. I've always respected and understood this, and up until this point, it was never a problem. I feel completely betrayed by my fiancé. We've been together for 2.5 years and are planning to get married next year, and like he doesn't respect me at all. We've been in weekly couples therapy sessions since December to work through issues that are completely separate. I'm asking because I don't know if I'm overreacting or if there's a perspective I'm not seeing. I want to work it out, but right now, he is stubbornly believing that he did nothing wrong and that I shouldn't interfere in his friendships. He says it's his house too, so he can have whoever he wants, over until whenever he wants them to leave. I feel completely disrespected and like he's putting his friendship over our relationship, which, if we are to be married one day, should be placed above an individual's friendships, looking for any and all perspectives that I'm not seeing. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, this would be a boundary for me. I would not tolerate any one-on-one -on -one time between my partner and a woman he had a previous relationship with. I find it disrespectful. If he chooses to have a friendship with her, I would end the relationship. I have no need to be the cool girlfriend. The question is, what is your boundary and then will you enforce it? Do you think therapy is helping? His response to your request and subsequent behavior doesn't make me think it is. If I were you, I would end the relationship. 
Respect yourself more than he does. Comment 2. 1. You're in couples counseling already for other issues. Maybe this isn't the relationship for you. 2. Someone he's slept with before staying over that late alone would be alarming for just about anyone. 3. You calling every half hour to check on them makes it abundantly clear that this isn't healthy. Why are you fighting so hard to make something so obviously wrong work? Now for the update, thanks for all the comments from my last post. So, after I got back from my work trip, things were tense, to say the least. My fiancé and I had a long, heated discussion about what happened that night. He was adamant that he did nothing wrong and that I was overreacting. I tried to explain my feelings, but it felt like I was talking to a wall. He kept saying that it was his house too, and he could have whoever he wanted over. This argument went in circles for hours, and we ended up going to bed angry. The next day, I decided to take a different approach. I suggested we bring it up in our next couple's therapy session. He reluctantly agreed. During the session, I laid out my feelings again, hoping that our therapist could help mediate. My fiancé, however, doubled down on his stance. He said that he felt controlled and that I was being unreasonable. Our therapist tried to get him to see my perspective, but he was having none of it. The session ended with no resolution, and I felt more frustrated than ever. A few days later, I noticed that my fiancé was texting her more frequently. I didn't want to be the paranoid partner, but it was hard not to feel uneasy. One evening, I saw a message pop up on his phone while he was in the shower. It was from her, and it said, Can't wait to see you tonight. My heart sank. I confronted him as soon as he got out of the shower. He said they were just going to grab a drink and catch up. I told him that given everything that had happened, I wasn't comfortable with that. He got defensive and said I was being controlling again. That night, he went out anyway. I stayed home, feeling a mix of anger and sadness. Around midnight, I got a call from a mutual friend who saw them at a bar, looking very cozy. I felt a pit in my stomach. When he got home, I confronted him again. He brushed it off, saying they were just talking and that our friend was overreacting. I didn't believe him, but I didn't have any concrete proof either. The next day, I decided to take matters into my own hands. I reached out to her directly. I told her that I felt uncomfortable with how close they were and that it was affecting my relationship. She was surprisingly understanding and said she would back off. I felt a small sense of relief, but it was short-lived. When I told my fiancé about the conversation, he was furious. He said I had no right to interfere in his friendships and that I was being manipulative. Things escalated quickly after that. We had another huge fight, and he ended up leaving to stay with a friend for a few days. During that time, I did a lot of soul searching. I realized that this wasn't just about that one night. It was about a pattern of behavior that made me feel disrespected and undervalued. I thought about our history and all the times I had compromised for the sake of our relationship. I wondered if he had ever done the same for me. When he finally came back, we had a serious talk. I told him that I couldn't continue in a relationship where I felt like my feelings didn't matter. He apologized, but it felt hollow. He said he would try to do better, but I could tell he didn't really believe he had done anything wrong. I, I felt stuck. I loved him, but I couldn't ignore the red flags. A few days later, I found out that he'd been texting her the whole time he was staying with his friend. I felt betrayed all over again. I confronted him and he admitted that he had been confiding in her about our relationship problems. That was the last straw for me. I told him that I needed some space to think things over. He was upset, but he agreed to give me some time. During that time, I thought a lot about our relationship and what I wanted for my future. I realized that I couldn't marry someone who didn't respect my feelings or boundaries. It was a hard decision, but I knew it was the right one. When I told him, he was devastated. He begged me to reconsider, but I stood firm. I told him that I needed to prioritize my own well-being and that I couldn't do that in a relationship where I felt constantly disrespected. The fallout was tough. We had to figure out how to untangle our lives and divide our belongings. It was emotionally draining, but I knew it was necessary. I leaned on my friends and family for support, and they helped me through the tough days. I also continued with therapy, which helped me process everything and start to heal. Looking back, I realized that there were signs all along that I had ignored or brushed aside. 
I'd always tried to be understanding and accommodating, but it had come at the cost of my own happiness. I learned that it's important to set boundaries and stand up for myself, even if it's uncomfortable or leads to conflict. Thank you for reading. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.